One of the things that we're adding to this job, which we haven't done before, is the cellular modems for each inverter. And uh, we just popped the inverter in. It's pretty simple to install. It's pinned and located and it snaps right in. You've got one fastener, which you do need to tighten up. Engineer 775, we just got to a new site here. We're at a Presbyterian church in Georgia, and we are about to start building a ground mount. We're gonna put in a grid tie system for the church. I'm working with Johnny Boy on this one. This, I'm in his, as he says, God's country here in somewhere in Georgia. We're putting in a nice little Sinclair 28 panel 10k ground mount so got the site cleared and marked out concrete coming at two and uh, eventually we'll be to the point where we'll just have these posts driven by noon and Ray built the first day so 10k in a day and with the electrical we feel we could do that now I know I'm being a little aggressive but I think we can do it so we're working and getting ready to go Mr. Antonio Johnny Boy and Abraham, the usual crew. And then we're going to go up. I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, we're going to trench up and bring about 220 feet of mobile home feeder in conduit to the building and then transition. We've got to get over the other side of the building to put our disconnects and do our line side tap. This will be a nice little 10K SMA job. We've done similar in West Virginia and Georgia and South Carolina so what a beautiful day can't beat this the other thing we like about our job we're just automatically social distanced we are spread out in a beautiful place so thankful for that all right guys let's get to work time to dig I just got to take out a few some of these privets are bothering me and I love to dig them out. So here we go. Okay, lunchtime and we're ready for that concrete truck. Where is it at? So we're gonna use another one of those Georgia buggies to get in here because we have to stay off their parking lot. So I've got it all graded out, cleaned up some trees and made the site nice. It was level within an inch anyway, so that was great. So we're ready, ready for about five, six yards of concrete. And we got our purlins out here, our trusses here, and uh, we're ready to build. And I'm going to trench from here da -da -da -da, da -da 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 -da, up over there, probably 220 feet or so. Oh, he loves his Georgia buggy. Just can't keep him off it. Almost a yard at a time. Right, we started filling the holes. We're uh, just cleaning up. Back filling the ditch, put a two inch pipe it all the way up. You can see a disconnect. Maybe, yeah, we got a 200 amp connection there. GE, ooh, can't see that very well. Anyway, roughing this in with the excavator, get it really good, and then we'll rate, hand rake it out. He's just a boogie and on the tearing up the place. The concrete truck the guy's like, oh man, these guys are so slow. The first Georgia buggy just gets stuck if you just look at it. The second Georgia buggy's got tracks. There we go. Take that one back and throw it away. We're getting started here on day two of this ground mount. Taking some equipment back. We went and picked up our solar panels, 
taking back the Georgia buggy. And for some crazy reason, it rained this morning. It's not supposed to. Oh, look at the mad rakers. That's my job. So we're uh, just, you can see the disconnect way up there. So we're landing over there and we're coming down. It's about 220 feet to the SMA inverters. So we'll be back with the final install. One of the things that we're adding to this job, which we haven't done before, is the cellular modems for each inverter. And uh, we just popped the inverter in. It's a pretty simple install. It's pinned and located and it snaps right in. You've got one fastener, which I do need to tighten up. And then you get this little antenna and it's pretty straightforward, but you can't use it for one for both. You have to have one cellular kit for each um, inverter. I'm not sure what the plan is. I think it's a five-year plan. I need to make sure I know what I'm doing there. But um, anyway, this is the cell modem kit. A lot of times the inverters are a long ways away from where you can get decent internet or Wi-Fi from the, the system or 300 feet probably from the modem in the church. So that would be aggravating. So you just put a cell card in. That's standard practice for a lot of uh, inverters, built-in cell mo modems. So just wanted to show you this one on the SMA. So if you want to see what it's producing at any time, just pull it up in the Sunny Portal app and you can see what it's making. Okay, we're wrapping this baby up. Day three final touches here. We're, we've added the cellular cards to both inverters. We got our combiner panel down there. So we're just uh, now running our AC runs from the inverter. We're not using the secure power source on this one. That's what this terminal is about which would provide you power during the day or during sunlight hours to put a 120 volt receptacle somewhere, maybe here, or if we had run a line to the church, it could have given them an extra uh, receptacle. That's just an add-on. There's a lot of accessories and add-ons that aren't required just for making power. So we're just uh, grounding, bonding, making sure everything's good. Got our um, equipment uh, almost put together here and we'll finish landing our, our ground bar in there got our ground rod driven and that's all done we'll clean up this wiring trough and button this baby up and turn it on and zap Johnny on the other end yeah that'll be fun I'll show him all right we have transitioned from the solar to the grid side We're gonna be mounting a disconnect 100 amp disconnect is going to go right under this window. I think there's room for a line side tap in there. And uh, got to pull that SER cable through the crawl space into the back of this disco. I'm going to go find fuses. It's a dry core bit from, uh, I think it's from corebits.com or something in California, but the main thing about it is I have an arbor that has a, a place for you to put the masonry bit in in the middle so it keeps it centered so if you make a pilot hole and then you use this this thing's not bouncing all over while you're trying to do it he's got earplugs in I got earplugs in <laughs> <laughs> he's a little loud Oh, yeah, baby, that makes such a perfect, perfect hole. All right. Okay, wrapping up our line side taps right here in there. We have uh, 224 connected to 4 op And then we have our fusible disconnect. Everything's built for 100 amps. 
we uh, might be back. It would be easy to add another 10kW solar, a couple more inverters to this job because it's been overbuilt by Johnny. Okay, we're done. Another dual SMA transformerless inverters. These are great. Um, we put the cell cards in this time so they're connected and we tested it. We we're just making about 4,500 watts on a cloudy day. That's always good. Let me show you the rest. Oh, final films. There he goes. Okay. Strawed, seated, ready to go. All right, we made our transition with uh, this breaker disconnect here, and then we followed the HVAC lines in and brought it over to the meter base through the crawl space. Okay, here's the disconnect we've added. They'll probably end up painting that to make it blend in. All labeled up, ready for inspection. So we've added our fuse disconnect. We come in and do a line side tap there. And it's ready to go. The system is uh, built to overkill for 100 amps. We're only probably going to be making 40, 44 maybe tops with this array. So all the infrastructure, the wiring, the combiner panels, the junction boxes are ready to receive up to 100 amps. So down the road, if they're happy with this and they want to do more, it'd be very easy to put another array, another ground mount, somewhere and uh, we can then hook and run conduits to the combiner over there and uh, pop in two more breakers and we're up and running with 20 kW so uh, it's nice just to doesn't cost that much more so and we do run the mobile home feeder in 2 inch PVC conduit so a little bit safer from rocks and future digging so uh, yeah, we could put another array, I could put it over there, we could put it just about anywhere they want. I think they're gonna add on a building here, so hopefully that won't cause, I don't hope they don't come out too far and cause shading, but uh, we could definitely double their capacity. But I think they're good for now, and it's a fun job. Good to be back post-coronavirus, back to working, and we're in Georgia, so everything's a little weird at hotels and all that, but. We're uh, getting it done, having fun. All right, if you need help, we'd like to have a system. Uh, we can build you a grid tie, or a hybrid, an off-grid, you name it. So uh, that's where we're at. You happy with it, boss? I'm happy. I'm thankful to have this job during, during these times. During these funky times. Well, I'd take it any time. These are great jobs. These are fun. Where do you think we'd put another array if we came back? Dig out more brush and just keep going. Just keep going back in the ditch. Do they own that pasture over there? Yeah. Just dig out the rest of that brush. Oh, I love it. Thanks. That's, that's, those are sweet words. Stop killing my rabbits. All right. Feel free. Put one up against this fence and feed it. Could do that. Westification. West. All right, folks, if you need help, would love to go off grid. Um, a lot of people ask about scalability. This one is the one that we've put in, it definitely will scale. And uh, happy to come put the system in for you. We prefer ground mounts, though. We really, really like putting in ground mounts. See you later. Engineer 775 signing out. <laughs>